A new analysis of the gun that went off on the Rust movie set may lead to brand new charges now against Alec Baldwin. A second round of testing has concluded the trigger had to have been pulled or depressed. Baldwin denies pulling the trigger. He insists that the gun went off accidentally after he pulled back the hammer. Prosecutors had dropped an involuntary manslaughter charge against the actor back in April while they waited on this new round of testing on the gun. So will they decide to reinstate charges? We do want to bring in now criminal defense attorney and legal analyst Bernarda Villalona. We appreciate you being here as well as firearm safety expert Steve Wolf. Steve, I know you've consulted with the prosecution in the criminal case and you've been an expert witness in the civil lawsuits as well. Welcome both. I do want to start with you, Steve. Uh, can you explain in layman's terms how forensic experts concluded that the trigger was indeed pulled? Well, uh, because you have to press a trigger in order to make a gun fire. Uh, the, the thing here is that Alec could be right in saying that he didn't press the trigger, meaning in his mind, he didn't intentionally press the trigger because he was holding the gun thusly with his finger already on the trigger. And on these single action guns, it only takes a tiny movement of the trigger to depress the, the part that disengages the sear. So... He, he could be holding the gun like this, not realizing that he's pressing the trigger, pull the hammer back, and then when he lets it go, the gun fires. So uh, these single action guns have very short mechanism on the trigger, but you still have to press them. They won't go off by themselves, not even with the best telekinesis. If you were prosecuting this case, would you reinstate criminal charges against Alec Baldwin? I don't really have an opinion on whether we prosecute him or not. I simply rule on whether there's grounds within the physical evidence. And the physical evidence says that the charges would be substantiated, that you did have to press the trigger. Whether that's relevant or not is, is entirely another issue. Um, if, if you take a gun from someone, you don't check that it's loaded or unloaded. You take it from someone who you know is not an armorer. It happens to contain live ammo. And then you point the gun at somebody. You're breaking so many safety rules already that whether he broke that third rule of touching the trigger is almost a moot point. What, what he did in my mind qualifies as reckless endangerment, regardless as to whether he touched the trigger. Okay. And there is, there's no part of gun safety that relies on the gun to be in proper working condition. Bernardo, let me pose that question to you then. If you were prosecuting this case, would you reinstate those criminal charges for Alec Baldwin? So if I were prosecuting the case, I would take a long thinking of what to do in this case. And I would say no. And the reasons are is because it's going to be very difficult to get a conviction in this case. I think there are many holes in terms of reasonable doubt, especially since there's been many blunders in this case from the very beginning. He was charged. He was arrested. But then they downgraded the charges where the gun enhancement was taken away because the law wasn't read correctly by the prosecutor. And then supposedly they dismissed the case without prejudice because supposedly the gun may have malfunctioned and now they're saying that no it didn't malfunction that key piece of evidence right there the information of possible malfunction is reasonable doubt for any jury so as a former prosecutor i wouldn't go forward on this case because you're it's highly unlikely that you'll get a conviction in this case after alec baldwin that is very different from the other co-defendant miss gutierre reed Interesting. And Bernardo, what does happen now? Is there a time limit for prosecutors to make a decision on charges? So when it comes to charges, depending on the level of the charge and being that this is not an intentional murder, an intentional homicide, where in those cases, there is no statute of limitations. You can always bring a prosecution when it comes to like intentional homicide. However, because this is ruled as an involuntary manslaughter case, it's usually four years from the day of the death, the day of the incident. So technically, they have a while before they have to make a decision as to whether to recharge him. Steve, I appreciate that you're bringing knowledge to us of the chain of command here, the safety checks that should have taken place, as well as the firearm itself. Um, with your knowledge, background, and opinion, who do you believe bears most of the culpability for, for the terrible thing that happened that day? Uh, Natasha, I believe you would run out of fingers before you finished pointing them at all of the people who had blame in this case. Uh, but ultimately, uh, a producer has to step up and take responsibility for the failures of their crew. Uh, certainly, the armorer 
messed up. Certainly the AD messed up. Certainly Alec Baldwin messed up. There's enough fault to go around in this case. But someone has to say the buck stops here. And typically a producer would step up and say, yes, these people did wrong, but they worked for me. I am responsible for what happens on my set. And I haven't seen anything like that yet. With regard to whether there was equipment failure, there's always the presumption that there will be equipment failure. That's why you don't point guns at people that you don't want to kill. That's why you don't put live ammo into guns that you don't want to discharge bullets. So physically, you know, really everything was done wrong and nobody stepped up to check. And so this is a, a broad range of failures. But ultimately, with firearm safety, the responsibility comes down to the person who's holding the firearm. And if you're going to say, I don't know anything about guns, don't touch them. And if you're going to say, well, I just relied on my armorer, then why did you take the gun from the AD, who is not your armorer? So there's just so many holes in the defense for me that I do not believe that a conviction would be hard to get. I think that the people of the state of New Mexico understand guns and gun safety. They understand whether firearms are being handled responsibly or not, and that they would recognize that so many of the rules were broken here that it was inevitable that someone be injured or killed. Okay, Bernardo Villalona, Steve Wolf, appreciate you both. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.